So last week when we recorded, I made a promise or a pledge. I was like, you know, we're not going to talk about Kanye. Like this is going to be the part two of our Kanye episode and then we're going to move on and keep it pushing and be fine. I feel like I, we should just front load the fact that I, I have to break that pledge because there's just, there's just, there's a lot. So we're not going to do an episode. We're not going to do an episode because he doesn't get that anymore. But there was a headline I didn't want to, I, I had to, I, I, I felt I had to bring up. Just because it's too, it's too music related. There's too many, there's too many threads here. Um, so as you know, Kanye's been kind of, what do we describe? How wilding. Do we, wilding. Yeah. Yeah. Wilding for the, wilding out for the last couple of weeks. Um, harassing, perhaps, if, if that's how you prefer to phrase it. Venting. I don't know. It's, it's a, a little, a little bit of all, um, but he seemingly crossed the line where, well, Trevor Noah on his show did a critique of Kanye, did a segment where he was sort of like, what are you doing? Like, this is, I know, think about it. Like if Kim Kardashian can't expect, can't escape this abuse. Think about what like regular women go through. Like, you know, kind of using this mm. to show that like this domestic sort of harassment isn't okay, right? Kanye needs to chill. Kanye West responded with the post on Instagram as usual, as is the brand this day, these days for him. And, um, I'm not gonna say what he said, but called you know called called Trevor Noah a couple you know used a racial slur against him, uh, and very long post about how you know whatever Trevor knows whatever whatever Trevor Noah commented under the Instagram post and was like I'm just looking out for you man I'm just trying to make sure you're good I love you you're one of my favorite artists and it hurts me to see you go out like this like sort of that sort of thing that's what I saw about it and I thought okay maybe this could actually be I don't think Kanye responded to that maybe this that could be a end of the story Trevor Trevor Noah uplifts. You know this other guy uh then the next day i guess kanye was like they started reporting that he was uninvited from the grammys where he was scheduled to perform because he you know when you have all those nominations you perform and um yeah he got uninvited and the, the two sources you know these reports were saying it was one because of his outbursts on online and two because he specifically was you know coming at trevor noah who's hosting the grammys and they didn't know if there was going to be an altercation and apparently mm. the source from kanye's camp was like he confirmed this and that was it so yeah uh do you have a take on that do you, you know you do you have a do you have feelings on that on it personally personally i don't i don't really care honestly like kind of get invited like i just don't care I, it, it just doesn't matter to me honestly like i'm just really indifferent about it but i know you have thoughts on it I don't know. I think for me, there's two places to go. On one hand, it's nice to see the Reporting Academy put holding someone as high as Kanye. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Behavior. You know, I think there's always something to say about that, you know, uh, sticking to what you to what you what you say, like not just tweeting it during Women History Month, actually showing that you value women, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I also feel like if it was more so the Trevor Noah thing, that the fact, you know, because Kanye was, was was acting like this for a minute and this came, this headline came only after that specific incident. I sort of feel like if this is more so in response to that, I sort of take a little bit more issue because if Trevor Noah can vent his opinion on his show, I think he has to expect Kanye West is going to reply in some manner. So if it was like, oh, we're just concerned because Trevor Noah was hosting, it's like, I get it. If there's safety concerns, I get it. But if it was just a matter of, you know, he sort of messed with the wrong guy here. Then it's sort of like, ah, you know, that I don't know if that is, is if you talk about him, the guy's gonna respond. But yeah. then again, that's complete speculation. I don't know what happened. For all I know, Trevor Noah could have had absolutely no say in this, and this could have been above his head, and they could have been brewing this for days, you know, uninviting the guy. Um, so I don't know, but I think there's just, I, if, I'm looking I'm looking to see if there'll be more details about I this. assume that post where the like interaction went on, on Instagram is deleted. Oh yeah, he deletes. Well, yeah. they suspended him. Instagram suspended him for. Oh sure. yeah, duh. Yeah. <laughs> so I think they removed. So the it's gone. Did that, yeah. So if you go to his account, it's like no post. So it'll be like, there's no post on this person's account. One or two or something. Zero followers. <laughs> it makes sense from the Grammy side because, like, if Kanye performed, you know, he would end up doing or something, something or saying something that would end up being bigger than like. The, actual the show. news that of like the actual show yeah. you know and then I mean? we'd accuse them of doing like a ratings ploy or something like y'all knew exactly. Kanye was gonna spaz and you yeah that's very true he's notorious for stealing the show at these award shows yeah. even if none of this was going on Kanye would find a way to steal the show because that's just what he yeah. does but remember that one time that guy won like the best best album and he was about to walk up and he didn't remember that and Jay-Z and Beyonce were looking all nervous they were like and they were like ah that's so funny Kanye and everything 
I remember that. Remember that? And then I remember he did an interview. He was like, I was about to do that, but then I listened to that album later, and it's actually really good. <laughs> he was like, that album was actually great. That's yeah, man. Kanye yeah. does that. So, hate to have started with Kanye again, but that does seem too, too overarching of things, like, currently yeah. happening to not at least touch on it. Um, but with that out of the way, welcome to the 97 Demo Podcast, where we talk the latest in music news, releases, and a whole bunch more along the way. Um, I'm one of your three hosts, Nambi Guanwu, joined by... Noah McGee. And David Wall. I remember when that was a challenge. Love the growth, guys. Um, so this week, we're uh, we're bringing two albums that, uh, from artists that I think we've both been following for a minute. Um, and I think that the way the way this sort of came together speaks to sort of um, why I think we've been following them. We're reviewing Lil Durk's um, 7220 and uh, Benny the Butcher's Tana Talk 4. Uh, albums that from artists that you may not immediately associate together in your head or lump together in your head but i have grown to think are actually kind of similar and then apparently there was a storyline here uh that that some people were putting together um little dirk apparently posted something on instagram before the album came out and it was like i dare somebody to drop on my date or like nobody better drop on my date uh-huh. and i think some of benny's fan well i guess anyone who was releasing that day your fans are probably going to be like oh oh so i think so some so of is. fans typed it up and was like you know why are you, why are you, you know, how are you going to let this slide, you know, whatever, and expecting Benny to sort of react. And I thought Benny the Butcher responded in an actual very mature way. He was like, I could never hate on Smirk, I guess what he called Bull Dirk, uh, like y'all hate on me. See, I respect the grind and know it took him 10 years after what you want to get to where he's at. Me and bro got the same security and some staff, so it's all love. I thought that that detail was kind of interesting. Um, don't hate or envy the next man. Put in the work and wait your turn. Uh oh. Which I thought was actually like a night nice, that was a very like very sure. stand up way, stand, mature way to respond mm-hmm. to that. Cause I think Lil Durk's doing what any rapper does, right? Where they flex and then you know, like you oh, know. Yeah. Sure. there has been plenty of bars about moving dates around or uh, you know, around when, when my album drops. J. Cole had one. Um so anyway, I just thought that, that was that was sort of uh, an, an interesting way to segue into our discussion about these two albums, our reviews about these two albums. Um it's so funny to me that Benny put this out on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I was so of I like, was like, wait, is that, is that Facebook? But I was it like, makes sense right though. It actually is it seems so fitting that Benny the Butcher's like on Facebook, not on like Twitter where all these <laughs> dunks rappers are. Like he's on <laughs> it's funny because he's on Twitter too, but like why is he why did he decide to post that on Facebook? On Facebook. It's pretty funny. It's great. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. So I mean, I think with these two artists, guys, like I was sort of saying before, you may not associate them together, but there's a lot that I think actually is in common. They're both, I think, very good lyricists, even though they have very different ways of rapping and styles of rapping. Like Lil Durk, you know, I think is in that melodic bag. And Benny the Butcher is more of like, you're, you know, just going to give you the bar, you know, your, your, your East Coast flow type of thing. They also, I feel, come from collectives and that's like a big part of their music and a big part of like what they do. Uh, Lil Durk with OTF, Benny the Butcher with Griselda. Um, and they, you both see that reflected in their music a lot. So. I feel like there's actually some comparisons to be made here uh, that I didn't actually think were going to be there when we picked these two albums together. Did any of y'all mm-hmm. notice that? I didn't think about that either, honestly. Like, I don't know. It's really interesting considering like both of these guys, like Benny's like in his mid thirties and he's like now getting more popular. Like, it's really interesting considering obviously Dirk is younger, but like he's been around for a minute. Yeah. He's like now gaining like a lot of popularity. So. It's kind of parallel in that sense, you know what I'm saying? The timelines, obviously Dirk is way bigger in a way, you know, but I'm, in terms of Benny, he's seen some, some success they've never seen before and Dirk can say the same thing. So uh, yeah, it's interesting. The timeline's been similar the last couple of years. Yeah. And they're both the, artists that have done it for a while, you know? Yeah, yeah. The collective point you brought up is a really good one because it does like, yeah. it is very obvious in their music. Very. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why I sort of like both of their albums, generally speaking, because I like artists who, and I think this is big in rap, where like, you know, there's some artists that do the whole braggadocious thing from the jump, where like, you know, they'll 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 ask their friends to pull up pull up with, you know, a nice car and they'll be rapping about owning it. Like that, that was that's a whole thing, rappers, you know, they'll they'll throw the parties and flex. They don't got nothing after they don't really got nothing to bank account. Like that's a part of it, and that's fine. <laughs> but like I, you know, there's there's something about rap where it's like, you know what they're saying is authentic and real and they're living it because you also oh, yeah, saw yeah, yeah. that news headline about that thing that they're saying. So, you know, you know, like there's something about the truth and the, the authentic feel in their music that I think also attracts me to both. So that's one thing I yeah, noticed. That's a good point. By both. I like that too, yeah. Sometimes you can just tell, you can tell when it's there, the authenticity. Exactly. 
Yeah, um, like so we're going to be we're going to get into the two albums in a sec. I, I like that we did that little preview uh, with headlines. I guess this is something I wanted to bring up because I don't think people knew it. But I think we we associate Griselda sort of West Side Gun, Conway the Machine, Benny the Butcher, Matt Kami, maybe. You know, Conway the uh, Machine left last month. I don't know, or at least revealed last month that he was no longer in Griselda. And I didn't know that. I didn't I didn't realize that was even a. But well, I, let me rephrase. He's no longer signed to Griselda, the label owned by West Side Gun. He's still in like the collective, you know, sort of thing. If you think about it in two different lights, but I just thought it was interesting. He's no longer formally with yeah. them. Yeah. I, I guess it's not, you know, neither here nor there. Well, it's, I think it'll come up with the album, like the review later, but neither here nor there. I just thought that was something I, we didn't, I don't think we knew before. Yeah, I didn't know that. I'm interested now, like, so like, where is his music gonna come off? Like he just did one album Shady. The album he just dropped. He did one album on Shady. Yeah. He was doing Griselda stuff. So like I think probably I think I don't think that impacts the Shady uh No, he's not. He did one album on like this album he did. It was a one he said it was his was first and only done. album. One and uh-huh. done album. That's his only album on Shady. So I'm like, Well he said he's looking next? for the bag. I'm pretty sure in that interview with the Breakfast Club, he was like, I'm trying to get whoever or like yeah. every, whoever has the biggest bag, like, let's make it happen. And I, I'm sure at that point in your career, when you're someone like we like we've said, none of them are like super young guys. So I'm sure oh, you yeah, have nah. other things to take care of. It's like, yeah, just give me, you know, give me the check. Give me the bag, bro. Yeah. Give me that check. Um, okay, well, we're, we're gonna get into both of those albums later. I guess we can start thinking about who we want to go to first with those uh, while we do new releases, um, which was, a, I think, a sufficient one. We got some albums, Charlie XCX with Crash, with Salia with Motomami, uh, a lot of singles, uh, Nigo and Lou. A lot Lou of singles. With heavy. Uh, I'm not, I can't even, there's just a lot. Fabio Form put something out, Method Man put something out, Joyce Rice put something out, Sid and Lucky Day put something out. What did you guys all listen to? Tell me about Man. it. Man. I listened to a lot of this music. It was a lot of actually really solid music. But the one that stood out was the Sid. Um, dang, what's that saying for again? I had it in my freaking head with that, uh, what she says at the end of that. Um, yeah, but um, that album was really good. I mean, not that album, that song is really good. And it's a couple singles. She has a couple singles released from her album. It's gonna be called, what's it gonna be called? Broken Hearts Club. That's gonna be the name of the album. She already has like four, five tracks released on it. so. I'm excited about that. It's been a minute since Sid released some music. Um, wait, so is C Y B A H? Like, how does she say that? Does she say it in the song? Like, yeah, she says the word. She's no, no, it's not side, but it's uh, it's just like it's she she says it out. I'm uh, I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it. Oh, could you break a heart if I ask? Could you break a heart? Ooh. So could you break that's, a heart? That's good. Yeah, that's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. And it sounds good. Um, yeah, man, Sid is Sid is great. She has been a fan of Sid for a minute. Yeah, I love. Yeah, I love Sid. I love her work with Internet. Her solo work's still good. So yeah, I love Sid. So uh, I'm excited about this project. uh, This this project that's coming in a couple of couple of weeks. I think. I think it's coming in April. So yeah, first week in April. But uh, yeah, I have some other ones. But I'm gonna let y'all say y'all standouts. Everybody got it going. Yeah. Yeah, mine's the new Rosalia album. Moto Mommy is so good. Like. Uh, it's really I, good. I, I just I can't I, I want to talk about it on this. Yeah, you know, I think we're gonna add it to the review roundup in a yeah couple of weeks. But um, yeah, Rosalie is just really incredible and she has a beautiful voice. Beautiful a voice. Beautiful voice. And the way she's able to like, I don't know, just there's like 14 songs of the album, and like you can make a case that like they're all different genres. It's kind of crazy. Mm. She kind of stretches herself out, and it's very impressive. So. Yeah. And all the singles are amazing, and the album's even better. And uh, yeah, I, I really love it. I really no love disappointment, it. not at all. That's great, man. That's a good thing. I remember you were excited Thursday night. You was like, man, this this is coming out I'm so hype. I know, I'm so I, excited. I can't wait. I listened to it yeah. that night. Like, it was so good. That's what's up. That's a good thing. That's what's up, yeah. man. Namdi. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with. Fair by Normani, you know, another single she's put out, still very much some of the R&B realm, but uh, with lyrics that seem to be more uh, raw, vulnerable, maybe get into that that sort of bag. I think it fit her really well, because I think it's a great song. Um, I'm kind of wondering where where Normani's album is. because That's just, what I was thinking too. I was gonna ask that. Motivation, and that was 2019. That was a while ago. That was a while ago. And since then we've, we've gotten, you know, uh, what was the Cardi B song? Uh, oh yeah. Dang, I know what you're uh, talking about. Gosh. 
Okay, it's on the tip of. I want to say wild. We got the. We had the song where she was like dribbling the basketball. Remember that, that? was motivation. I know that's yeah. wild outside. That's what it's called, wild side. Okay, so she's okay, got okay. these like singles sort of consistently. But I'm wondering when uh when we'll get an actual album. But you know, this is a good song. Good song. So I I I, uh, I uh, applaud her for the effort. Look forward to what we get from her next. Uh, dope, but dope. any honorable mentions, ladies and uh, ladies and gents? Yeah, there's a couple I wanna uh, wanna point out. This persuasive by I am Doche. She was on the Isaiah Rashad "What You Said" song. Remember that? She's uh, yeah. a new signee. She's a new signee to TD. So this is like her first official single on TD. That's cool. Um, yeah. So that was really cool. Um, a couple. Okay, the Nigo tracks. Both the Nigo tracks I want to touch on. The little Uzi Vert one. I wasn't messing with because it sounded like a drill song, something Five Year Porn would do. Yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. <laughs> literally that. sounded like off the grid. I thought again. <laughs> Yeah, it's not, bro, literally the exact. Okay, so that's like, the thing. No, here's the thing we need to we need to understand. Off the grid was just a New York drill beat. It's not that these sound, songs sound like off the grid. No, the, no, no, no I'm not saying all drill sounds like off the grid, but this one, this beat in particular. Yeah, this uh, beat in particular. It did. It, it did. Okay. I was not it to kind it. of off the grid ish. It, it it was off the grid ish. Um, sorry, we sound ignorant of that, but it did. Um, no. the Teriyaki Boys one was cool. That was cool, and the Joyce Rice. Hey, Trinata track was good too. Ice T, that was good too. So I messed with all those songs. Except Word, the, well, except the, any other songs you want to mention? Those, you know, Boys Weezer put out a new song called A Little Bit of Love. They're doing like four albums this year, all named after a oh, season. Oh, what? Yeah. They're doing the Brock this... Hampton thing? Yeah, it's going to be like seven songs each. Um, and they're all named after a season. So uh. this was the first single for spring. That was good. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I listened to the Joyce Rice song as well. I thought that was cool. I actually thought this Method Man song, and I normally don't listen to Method Man, at least this regularly, but I thought it was, that was good. a pretty good song. Um, I liked Blick Blick by Quilla Ray and Nicki Minaj. I, I liked that song. Oh. I, I, I imagine that having some staying power. Um, and Avery, because of you, I listened to the, some of this Charlie XX album because you were so big on the pandemic one. Mm -hmm. Completely different. I don't yeah. know what. It's completely different. And this album's very good too. <laughs> the pandemic one. <laughs> I'm probably gonna bring it up. She didn't. Well, no, the pandemic one was very much. So I kind of believe now that she maybe she creates for moods or something because the pandemic one I think worked because it was so like it was calmer and like it reflected sort of the quarantine. It felt like oh, that was the, the pandemic one. Yeah, but this one is like super duper. This one is like hyper pop. It feels. No, that she kind of strayed away heard. from hyper pop. We expected maybe oh, I don't know what hyper pop is, but I'm gonna say everyone, it's definitely, definitely dance pop. Like everyone, ish. yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Everyone kind of expected her to lean more into hyper pop. She touched on it on uh, the pandemic one, but like, wait, so what's hyper pop like, then? Maybe I don't know what hyper pop is. I, I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you. Hyper -pop. Jason, I, I got you. Don't worry. I just thought hyper pop was super poppy. Like, like, like maybe like uh, it has a very distinct like. Like Lil Uzi sounds very good on hyper pop. Huh. Okay. Like I, like, I can. I, I'll show you some. But yeah, this one, she kind of like very dance pop leaned line. away from it. It's very interesting, but it's really good. I really enjoyed it. Ever said I got you. Don't worry, <laughs> I got you covered. Alrighty, so now for our actual discussion, uh, two we're doing back to back rap reviews. Uh, Dirk seventy two twenty and Benny's Tana Talk Four. What do you want to start with? I don't mind starting with okay, Dirk. Dirk, Dirk Dirk's out. Well, actually, ooh, actually, kind of want to start with Benny. You want to start with Benny? I want to start with Benny. Oh, right, let's do it then. Let's do it. So, Ted to Talk 4, uh... You want me to give you a background? Go ahead, you got it, go you ahead. Give, give me a background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Benny the Butcher, this is his uh, 11th millionth album. <laughs> uh, but uh, for real, for real, um, this is obviously his fourth, uh, his fourth uh, installment of the Tana Talk series. Tana Talk 3 came out in 2018, I believe. And to my knowledge, that was like the first album that was like where he was getting a lot of critical acclaim. He obviously widespread. had projects. Yeah. yeah, widespread acclaim. Obviously he was putting out, you know, he was putting out good projects before a couple of them. Let me let me name them off the top of my head. Actually, let me go to them right now. Uh, yeah, he had a couple albums, Butcher on Steroids in 2017. A Friend of Ours came out in 2018, but Tana Talk 3 in 2018 is the one that really caught people's attention. He had a song on there called 97 Hove, and I think that's what kind of got, got him signed to Rock Nation. That song in particular, I think, I believe. Obviously, he's talking about Jay-Z. So, um, yeah, so um, that's the one that really got him acclaim. And then the next year he put out the plugs I met and then he kind of took off in terms of like, you know, the uh, acclaim and, uh, you know, the claim he's been getting. But um, 
it feels like this album is the first one in a minute where he was like strictly obviously benny is a hard you know he talks about drugs and all that but this is, feels like the first one in a minute since um the plugs i met the first one where he was like going really hard because like the last one the plugs i met too even though i love that album he got i mean he got uh you know french montana on there he has two chains on there he has fat joe on there his hooks are really good they're really catchy. she made avery like addicted to overall that's such a like overall is catchy song amazing. yeah exactly and then burden of proof it's produced by obviously uh not boy wonder uh, um what's his name crap the guy who did uh the nas albums hit boy? He's, 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 hit boy hit boy he did all those songs those are obviously bigger songs he got lil wayne big sean on there you know obviously more like um it feels like some of those songs could have been radio friendly. Obviously, they weren't on like the radio, but the one more radio friendly. This feels like he's going straight, straight like hard drug dealing rap all the way, like going all the way back to what he was, uh, you know, became popular for. And I really I appreciate that. The only that, thing so. I'd like say to that is I don't think the con, even when he was doing more radio friendly, I don't think the content was that different. I think he still was sort of doing the like drug rapper bars, if you will things even even on the the radio so well, like more. oh yeah but like he had a song with like freddie he was talking about a girl the whole time like mess with a girl. like he says like i remember on here he was talking about, i'm not rapping like doing no girl songs or about no love songs like yeah. he's he kind of played around with that a little bit like a lot of r&b singers like he had some r&b singers on uh, burden of proof which i still enjoyed it but it was just his version of like leaning a little bit towards that obviously like, i agree with you it wasn't like all the way like he's talking about I love you, girl. So I guess, well, let me, maybe we start there then. In that sense, like, this is a less commercialized album than sort of what we're saying. More feels more underground, maybe more, I'd say more to his roots, because he sort of, before, prior to those albums, this is, I think, what the, what more of the formula was. Like, a more toned down, drug bar, straight spitting, kind of like sharp lyrics sort of thing. And I think it's continued that. So for me, it almost felt like, you know, the the actual album he did burden proof i think that was also his first, i don't know if that was like an actual i think he does a lot of eps or whatever mixtapes i think that was an actual album that distinction mm -hmm. matters to people so i think maybe I that's why it was a little bit more well-rounded in that sense this bit is an album as well so maybe you could argue it's his first album that really leans into that style but i think he has prior work i guess is the point that feels very much so similar oh yeah 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 for uh, sure yeah to this. i agree i agree um, i agree but I will say to your point about it being commercial, this starts with John P's caddy, uh, Benny the Butcher and J. Cole. I think that's probably the the most commercial rapper that would make sense to be on an album that's not commercial. If that I agree. Sense. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about John P's caddy. Obviously, that's a single from a while ago. But uh, a and then in a hit now, let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, I agree. But uh, <laughs> you know, what I found interesting about this is uh, Benny, he said in an interview, he said West Side Gun came up with the, the name of the song. He was like, yeah, man, your dad used to drive a a caddy. I was like, oh, that's interesting. But um, how y'all feel about this, Namdi? How y'all feel about this track? I love it's, this song. It's, it sounds better on the uh, album. I love this song. This song is, I mean, so I, <laughs> I just say a, it. I, there's, there's a pro and con for me here, and this isn't hating. The pro is I love this song, and I think this is like a hit. I think it's a banger. I, you know, I love Cole's verse. I think this is one of J. Cole's best verses in a, in, in a one. Cole's been on an amazing feature run generally, but I think this, yeah, this song is particularly, it's like, you have two people who are clearly just great lyricists, great rappers, and it's sort of like you feel as if they're almost trying to like one up in, in an essence, but like that just speaks to the quality that they both have on their own. Like they're just, they're both amazing rappers. So that aside, like just, I think literally the best song, like one, one of my favorite songs. The way the way that I feel that's sort of almost detrimented is I feel it starts off on such a high and then it becomes a question of like, you keep me on that high the rest of the album. And that's what I think gets debatable. But I don't know, I think we get into that later. But um, yeah, I love this song. Avery? Yeah, I mean, this is like top three on the album for me. It's so hard. Absolutely. And yeah, like, it's really good. The, the instrumental is so cool. And like, Yeah, so I wonder like, who that, what's that it, um sample? I don't I know. It's it. so moody. Like, I really love, like when Cole says, I think his first line, where is it? Oh, he went on the night I was born, the rain was pouring. God, yeah. oh, like, that it was feels so like there's oh. like a thunderstorm. Yeah. And, like, Painting a picture. It just feels dark and like I really love it. Like they really do like the song is fantastic. I agree. And I told you, man, like Benny, I was y'all know I'm a Benny. I was talking to a friend who's like, bro, John P's caddy, how do you feel about it? Who had a better verse? I was like, bro, I love Benny. He's I like I think his <laughs> verse is amazing. It was Cole. Sorry, it was Cole. But Cole, <laughs> but Cole and Benny did his thing too, but uh Cole went crazy. And this is the thing about Cole 
that I'm glad he's starting. He done the last album. He's getting other producers to you know produce for him because it challenges himself. You know what I'm saying? Like when he just does his yeah. own for beats, it's like he's he's in a pocket. He's comfortable. It still sounds good, but like stuff like this, it's really dope. And this all was produced by Alchemist and Derringer. That's like a, Derringer's like one of the Griselda like main guys that um, you know he create kind of created that Griselda sound, like no drums and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean this one was. Woo. I I love it when J Cole talks shit and like. Yeah, it's just nice to hear it when he does that. So yeah, man, I that agree. is cocky. I love that it's on this song because um, I think, like, to your point about production, this style fits it more in a sense. I don't know. It's just, I get that. Yeah, like I, I think uh, more of this would definitely be good for Cole. But. Yeah. Now, now I do want to ask you because yes, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, y'all know me. I love Benny. Uh, I want to ask. You said you, you're not sure the album. I think the it energy. starts on such a high does it keep the energy throughout. And no, nah. I don't think it does. I think the first half is incredibly strong, but I think it sort of loses me by the end. And that's wow. partially because I think a lot of the actual, Benny the Butcher released so much, Griselda as a whole released a t releases a ton of music, a ton of music. And I remember at the time, and it used to be like three or four projects a year, we'd say like, oh, like, if you do it, I don't want you to tire people out. And I think that's sort of, especially from a content perspective, I find that happening to me. But I guess the other side of that is he's still an amazing rapper, right? So like still amazing like storyteller in that sense so that can carry it for a lot. Um, but yeah, towards the end, all of my favorite songs are on the first half of the album. We can talk about them if you want. That's super interesting. Yeah, that's super interesting because I kind of feel the exact opposite. Cause I, I, I mean, honestly, I like both sides uh, perfectly, but one of the tracks, from like the first half I do want to talk about. Um, and obviously Back Back by Soap God Cooks is great. Um, Super Plug is Soap too. But 10 More Commandments is something that was interesting because obviously that's like a part two to uh, Notorious B.I.G.'s yeah, to 10 Crack Commandments, which I was that's like- I loved it. And that's yeah, why I, I loved it. it. Yeah, I agree, I agree. And I was like, man, that's like one of the parts, like when he could like stick to a theme and he was just laying them out, like, like, I remember I was first listening to it. I didn't really connect. I was like, oh, it's called that. But then you hear him like 19, 18, 17, he's saying it. And it's relevant to what's going on now. He was kind of referencing like, don't tell on yourself on social media because that's what happens now, literally. Like, it's just relevant to what goes on now with like, you know, drug dealers and, you know, criminals now. And, you know, obviously Biggie was back in the 90s, but I thought it was interesting. So, so yeah. yeah I, I think, think for Diddy me- on here was a nice touch. Oh, yeah. for sure. I was nervous yeah. about it as far as seeing Diddy. Yeah, I thought you thought he was going to rap. I thought rap, he was gonna rap out like real estate or something, but now like he was. <laughs> <laughs> I was really nervous. He, he said he rapped about real estate. <laughs> I thought he was gonna talk about like investing and stuff, and I was like, Please, don't do that. But, I'm like, glad he just talked. Yeah, I'm glad he. Yeah, just yeah, talked. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm glad he just talked. Yeah, I thought I think a sequel to a Biggie it was song. It's a perfect fit. Yeah, it was nice that Diddy on there. Yeah, I totally, I totally, and totally it's agree. Flex in in itself to have Diddy on your song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Nice. That's something that's interesting with Diddy because like. This is totally because he hasn't had like the big artists to like yeah. blow up yet. Yeah, other than biggest, like what's been his artist that's like like in the last ten years? MGK. Yeah. That's uh well yeah okay recent because I was definitely about to pull some people out the nineties. So I guess yeah not was, yeah not nineties he was running it. You know, he, he had it. um you know day twenty six was cool for a minute. Ooh. Danity Kane, you know them groups from uh, the shows. You know they they had like two Ooh. three years where they were. <laughs> where they were doing it. Did he have his own song? You know, coming home was pretty popular. That was a good one. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure, for sure. But okay, so yeah. I feel like no, I yeah. feel like to your point to to like sort of illustrate what I'm trying to say about this album. Because the thing is, I'm not saying that it's not a good album at all. I it's because that's not true. I think it's a great album, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. I think what I'm saying is like take a song like Tyson versus Ali. Oh where it's a song where I think it's like the rapping, amazing, and him and Con, like, it's just, it's, it's, it, it, thematically, it makes sense. I get what they're doing. It's like, it goes super, super, like, hard. It's straight, I, you know, I'm a sucker for storytelling. So, you know, I feel like he, 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 he's given it to me in his all, right? I guess what I'm saying is it's not the first time he's done that, though, with this ex exact like theme and topic of like comparisons to like specifically Conway and the bar, you know, one of my favorite bars from, from uh, of one of the previous projects, like hits on that, where they're all featured on songs is like, you know, if, if, if uh, it's just, uh, if, if West is the one and Conway's a star, you yeah. know. Oh, still. that was a Conway, that was a Conway song, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, that was so a Conway, that was a Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's just my, I think it's like, 
it's a theme that we've heard before. They have a bar where it's like, you know, uh, we've heard about rap, but you know, I was, you know, I was selling weight, then I was rapping the comedy comparisons. It's like I he's don't he's doing it well, but if like when we talk, I don't know, I just feel like when we talk, sort of like when we talk Kanye, we acknowledge he's a great producer. Then when we review him, we're more critical of his lyricism, where we say like, okay, like we know you can do this thing. All your albums are going to be great because of this thing. Now we're looking mm -hmm. for what you do in addition to this thing that we already know you're great at. I think that's where I'm at with Benny partially because they release so much music so often and a lot of the content is kind of narrow so it's like his delivery is different cool but like the content itself is kind of narrow so i find myself in an album like this towards the end starting to get just a, a little bit tired which there was maybe some of the more radio stuff that was on the last one so at least it forced him to be a little bit more creative with the approach and the type of songs he had on here so i guess the argument on the other side is oh well, maybe this is the theme but i don't know that's that's i, I guess what i'm saying I get, I, I think, I, I think that's a fair thing. I think that's fair to say, like, I'm just tired out over the thing of like Benny and, you know, them comparing themselves. The thing is, I like it is just because it feels like recently, because, you know, Benny did a whole interview, like with the, I don't know if that was B Dot or the other guy, but um, uh, he did a whole interview in Complex doing like the bracket thing. Have y'all seen that on Complex? We'll do like a bracket of like yeah. the best lyricists. He did one and it was like the best lyricists. And I think Conway, ended up winning or something like that. And he's, he was always, he, he was really talking about them comparing themselves. And I loved it because I was watching a bunch of reviews and stuff like that. And it's interesting because Conway just released his project a couple weeks ago. Like it's, it's funny that their, their projects came out so close at the same time and people are gonna make those comparisons already. And they were kind of like, I mean, I'm just kind of happy to see you doing your thing, even though they both went super hard on it. And I love when they always do like the, the sports references like that's one of the things i just love about it like the tyson versus ali thing i just yeah. i don't know i get it I get, I get the thing it's just like man it's just so good like it's, it's just so good no and and, that's that's a, it's still a great song it's the other side of it right like it's still and the hook song. is just tyson versus ali it's okay. just benny uh, saying that's gonna, be, that's gonna be my criticism of it i think this song you don't like that i saw they don't like it i really like the song because i think the, the verses like they're rapping their ass off and i think they sound great i think the 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 issue for me from this song that like exemplifies kind of why I don't like this project as much as like the plugs I met too is just because like he they uh, really like killed the hooks on that I agree project with the point. and were like you know that not to say they were just like catchy but just like really solid hooks. really well and done then, like yeah you know I get to this song and you know the, the whole chorus is just Tyson first Ali Tyson first Ali which and I, I think like, is more in line with what they would have done before like that album and the, I agree. the commercialized I agree. album you know yeah i agree yeah i think i think it just depends on like what you so i think that's a fair i think that's a fair point but that's one of the parts i like about this because i was like mm -hmm. they're just like man no hook we're just gonna just say it yeah and that's one of the parts i love about it but i get i you still really like the song because the are, plugs like, i met too yeah sound great on the song. i super i super agree another one um i'm gonna i'm gonna skip track seven because i want to touch on that a little bit but thawi's revenge oh, that oh was like God. the most I that was like, song. and you know what's so crazy? It's so crazy. That's why Alchemist is the GOAT right now. Seriously, this man is like a legend and like a legend, literally. This is like the most trappiest thing that you wouldn't think Alchemist would do. Like, you know, you think Alchemist, no drums. He's going to have some sample in the background. Yeah. This is like a trap beat with like 808s and he's killing it. And it's super bouncy. Bro, this, bro, this, is, this is my second favorite song on the album. I'm just going to say that. I think I'm there. Uh, top, It was top three for sure, but it's one of my second favorites in part because I think of that was revenge we didn't say it almost has the most like energy it, like it feels yeah. it just feels the most it's like bouncy it's bouncy yeah like it's like he's still he's still rapping his ass off he's still delivering and like we get it we know you can do that but it has these other elements that just make you still kind of like you just the whole song you kind of just there you know um and like i like another way you can do the comparisons without having to do it as clearly as like to my earlier point he has the bar where it's like west show me the formula oh. now make me a millionaire that was, that was hard kind of like and you're yeah. still kind of doing it but it's like it's not the same sort of yeah it's not the same fair. sort of thing so like i love this song because i think it, it's it literally is the opposite of the point i was making before like if you had an mm -hmm. album more of just this where there's that more versatility there's more like uh like diversity in your flow throughout like this energy the energy he's rapping on this i think goes hard yeah. Um, so yeah, I agree. I, I agree. It, this one was super bouncy, but that's one of the things I'm kind of going to push back on because with Benny, I just feel, maybe this is maybe this is just how I feel. Maybe I'm standing. Maybe I'm standing. I, I, it's fine if I am. But I just feel like his tone is so aggressive and just the way he speaks. It's so like 
you know, it's really like mm, just punches really hard when he says stuff. You're like, man, like, yeah. like if I'm if I want to get to go back to Uncle Bun, I texted you guys this line, and I'm gonna say it, and it was like one of the hardest lines. I texted my brother. I was like, man, Benny is heartless. He says this. This is kind of crazy. He yeah. says, I sold oh, dope. I, I sold dope to a fiend while she's pregnant, emotionless. I'm not a caseworker. That's not the reason I sold this shit. Right, I was like. We- I, I was like, I don't like that though. I don't that's like bad. that. That's bad. That's bad. Okay, I hate that. I this is one of my favorites because I forgot about that. Yes. I, wanted, I didn't look. look I, I put not, my phone down. I was like, I want to be clear. <laughs> By me saying this is my favorite, I'm not Ooh. endorsing that. That's horrible. But Ooh. at the very least, remember what I said about these albums? How I was like, the one thing about this and Dirk is you know what there's, it's an added sense of like authenticity because you know yeah. what they're saying. That's, it's, it's so clear. And that's it's, what I love about this whole song. Because yeah. like that, that line, I was like, I said, bro, this man is hard. This man does not you care. Take, you, you, you take, you, it's that meme. You, you took your earphone out. You're looking at it. You're like, fire. oh, I was like, yeah, but I was like, that is hellfire. He, 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 he had a he had a couple lines, and you know, Avery joked about 38 spit spit sounding like Cat Williams, which is funny. He does. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, 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 that, that's, that's funny fair. that you said that. But then he also like 38 special had a line like mixing fentanyl with diesel. That shit they selling clogging needles. I was like, oh, like it's just so clear, and that's what I love. Like. You know, people make Mark make the argument all the time, like how drug music is all bad for you and everything. But then I look at it as the same way as like somebody enjoying the wire. Like it's really like um Ah, uh, it's a form of entertainment. Really, it's a so it, I mean it's visual. Obviously, it's not like it's just I think the the other side of that's gonna be we'll this is, we'll talk about this way more on Dirk's album. Yeah, yeah. The side of that's gonna be, but these are also real people. True. But my thing to your point, I think with this, this feels more like storytelling. Because I yeah, I, that's what I think. Now he's talking about what he did, like you know, what he whatever. did a long time like, ago. Exactly. That's everyone does that. And you with know, so. and with Dirk, and we'll talk about. We could talk about how that might affect what's going on right now, because he's very much still involved in that. Because I remember he did an interview with uh those guys who are on the um crap. They were on the uh they have the Barstool podcast. Those two black guys. Remember he was talking about his baby mom and stuff like that. But um yeah, yeah that was that was something interesting. I really like that song because that one's really. It's really visual, and you really—he's really painting a picture, and I really, really enjoy that. Um, I mean, we don't, you know, we don't look to these dudes to be like role models, right? Like at all. Just, they're okay, but, see, but people do. That's the thing, and I know you can yeah. say they don't ask for it, but it's like people do. There are people yeah. who view these people as their as mentors, as as paternal figures, as big bros. As we don't. I don't we don't i and i'm grateful like we don't right but there's absolutely especially if you're from community like communities like that where it's like that's what sure. you know yeah you aspire to be that person mm-hmm. so it's like yeah i think it absolutely still you know you may not look at them as role models but they're role models i agree um another one not a i want to talk about and you mentioned how you kind of didn't like the ending i actually like not not i'm not saying you didn't like the last track but one of the things i liked about the last track is that he was super personal because i don't know if you guys remember i don't know if this was last year or two years ago remember he got shot in houston i was like y'all benny got shot and i was I like remember. oh my gosh remember and he talks about that that's one of the things i love like benny doesn't get super personal on like what's going on you know often and that's what i loved about the last track he was talking about that time i got shot in houston and something like that i don't remember the line it's not coming off the top of my head but that's something i really did enjoy i don't remember if it was that track or the the second to last track. That's something I really really enjoyed from this song that that he was um you know just super personal talk about what's going on now, which I think he doesn't do often enough. And I was really happy I he agree. did that. I completely agree with that. So, um, and so yeah. yeah, I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, I agree. Um, a couple other songs we could just say like some of our faves because we've really did a lot of this. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, another one, another thing I really liked is that when he references back to like older albums, like older things he said on other albums, cause he had a song on Billy Joel. He said, cause this year I feel like 99 Hove. He said, you know, the first Tainted Talk 3, he had a song called 97 Hove. I like that. On Guerrero with West Side Gun, he made a bunch of references to old albums. He said, I'm famous. So they wonder where, where would I go on that one way flight? That was a song on Burner Proof. He said, Burner Proof me timeless. Benny, Benny, Big Sean Tucci. He had a song with Lil Wayne. Uh, Over the Limit with the new piece, Blue Emerald Cut Jewelry. Now, Over the Limit was a song he had on uh, on Guerrero. So, um, yeah, um, I really, really enjoy right when he goes song. back. Yeah, yeah, I love when he, I love when artists, like, just reference back, uh, you know, to old songs. Big Crit used to do that all the time. So, yeah, I love when they- a sense of, like, continuity to their stuff, right? Absolutely. Like, yeah, like that. Absolutely. I, I, do, I do agree. And um, I don't know, man, like, there's honestly nothing, like, even though there's things we can nitpick about, like, there's honestly nothing I would change about it. There's nothing I would change about this album. There's nothing I would be like, no ah, just take this off. 
Yeah, nothing I would like skip. There's no like big nitpicks like, man, that song just had to go. Or like, you could say like you didn't like this hook or something like that. Like I know Avery said he didn't like the hook, but there's nothing I would necessarily be like, man, that just has to go. That just has to get out. You know, and that's how I feel. I don't know how you guys feel about it. Like there was something that just had to leave, but uh, that's how I feel about it. In no way I'm saying it's perfect. Like it's a 10 out of 10, but there's nothing I'd be like, man, take it out. You could say, I wish he talked about this. You could say, man, I wish he talked about, hit this topic. But there's nothing like yeah, that. I mean, that's just straight up bad. I'm not gonna say anything. It's just straight up leave. I think 12. You already kind of narrowed it down enough for me to, you know, for me to, for me to give you that critique. It's there's just somewhere he wish I you may went. Not like revisit as much, but there's not any songs that I think. Are, I mean, there's, there's definitely songs that I like more than others. But um. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's cool, fair. But yeah. I don't think I've named them. Like yeah. most of them, I'm, that first half, like I said before, John and Caddy back that hack super plug. Um, oh yeah, super plug is crazy. Um, Dowie's revenge. Um, yeah. Avery, what were some of your favorites? I heard you yeah, say Tyson vs. Fury. And, and Thawi's Revenge. And yeah, Tyson vs. Ali, I really like the, Ali. the rapping. And I also really love Weekends and, Weekends and the Perrys. Ooh, love, that was so love. chill. It's, not, it's like a soul sample, right? You know what I was going to say? And this is, not you weren't here for that, so we didn't get your thoughts on it. But this is like, remember when that Currency album? This is like, if Currency did that, it would have been so less energetic and so less more like um, <laughs> energy on it. Yeah, because currency would use a beat like that, and it would been like, uh, but Benny and Boldy, even though Boldy's more lax too, Benny just has so much more umph in his uh, delivery that it's more uh, it's exciting when he's rapping over a beat like that. Yeah, um, it was yeah. really nice. But yeah, it's very calm so, to listen to. I agree. Okay. Vince, um, what are your what are your uh, final statements and scores for this bad boy? Yeah, I've been talking a lot, so I'll just go. Um, <laughs> uh, and also my favorite track too, Johnny Peace Caddy. That's amazing. Um, Tyson vs. Ali, Uncle Bun, Thawi's Revenge, and Bust the Brick Nick. Those are my favorites, but I like a lot of these. Um, yeah, man, Benny, Benny is, um, I don't know, man, he's just one of my favorites. Like I always say, I don't know if you could say there's a rapper. You could have rappers that you think are, you know, as good, but I don't think you can definitively say there's any rapper better than Benny right now. I don't think you can definitely say, like, this guy's better. You could, could be rappers as good as him. You say there's rappers you think are better. But I don't think you can definitely say like somebody's better than Benny as Why in terms of skill. Why is he a better rapper than Benny the Butcher? I don't think you can definitely say skill wise. You could say he's more successful. You could say that, but I can't think you can definitely say skill wise that J Cole is better than Benny. That's how I feel. That's how I feel personally. But um, I mean, Benny held his own with uh, arguably the best ever, Black Thought. He had a song with Black Thought, and he arguably just rapped as well. And Black Thoughts might be better than everybody, so. That's why I'm saying I think Benny has the skill level to be as good as anybody. That's how I feel. Um, but um, yeah, I, I enjoy this album. I love it a lot. I'm glad he's back on that grimy stuff. I think it's a reminiscent of some of my favorite albums, like Tana Talk 3 and The Plugs I Met, the first one. Those are my two favorites. So I would put this like right under there as like one of my favorites. So I really, really enjoy it. I'm going to give this... I'm going to give this album a good between an eight and an eight, eight and a half. I'm gonna give it an eight right now. I'm gonna give it an eight. I really like this album a lot. Um, I think uh, for me, I, I kind of said my piece already in the beginning, so I won't repeat it. I think uh, Benny's established himself as very much so one of the top player assistant rap right now. Uh, there's there's not really any questioning that, and this album's a good example of why. Um, but like I do with every artist, I think I'm gonna ask, you know, what what's next? Uh, uh, you know, I, I, let's what do we what do we how are we gonna enhance this a little bit more? Um, and if you don't know what I mean, again, go re-listen to my comments at the start of this. <laughs> so I'm gonna give this guy a seven. I think I'm gonna give it a seven. Yes. Hey, this is perfect. I'm like right in between you guys. I really like this album. I think the rhymes are great. I just like I don't think. I don't know. This is such a nitpick. I feel like, but like, I don't think the hooks are as consistent as they were on like previous albums, specifically the plugs in it too. Which to me, for my me personally, that's like the gold standard of Benny the Butcher. I love that album a lot. That's fair. Um, but that being said, like, it doesn't ruin any of the songs. Like Tyson vs. Ali is still one of my favorites because I think they're just rapping so well on it. Um, and when I listen to a Benny the Butcher Griselda project, I just want to hear good rapping, and they always do deliver on that. Um, so yeah, I think I'm like right in between you guys. It's a seven and a half out of ten. I like that. Perfect. I like that. That's that's over seven and a half. A lot of spins at the gym. That feels right. <laughs>
A lot of weights being lifted. No, talking time. about spins at the gym, this is a perfect segue into Lil Durk's album because that goes off at the gym every time. And it's, I listen to both of these albums at the gym. That's what's oh, fun. Oh, yeah. Um, these, were, these were great. I was listening Durk, to these at the gym. Heavier. Um, but I'm, I mean, I don't even know if this needs as much of a backstory, but Lil Durk, uh, actually, I think it does. Lil Durk put out 70, 7220. It's his uh, uh, follow up album to Voice of the Heroes, the collab he did with Lil Baby. Um, and, you know, Lil Durk is someone who's been around for a minute. He was on the 2014 double XL list and has only recently started popping, like, wow. really, really getting to mainstream appeal over the last, like, three or four ish years. Um, but yeah, 7220 came after a lot of, I would say, straight up tragedy in Lil Durk's life that he doesn't speak on, uh, speak of, you know, often. But I think this album shows he puts it all on his music. He lost his brother, D Thang, last year. Uh, he lost King Von, who was a close friend. And also, I think the year before, um, and is involved in a situation or uh, involved in certain like beefs that actually come with like real life or death scenarios type stuff. Um, and I think manages to put a lot of it into his music uh, somehow. Um, so I guess we can get into it from the intro or, or you know however you guys want to do. It. But what, what did you guys think of this album just generally? I appreciate how personal it was. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, man, I, I'm, I really, really appreciate how personal it was considering like, you know, based off hearing all this, like, obviously we know about the King Vaughn stuff, but like, um, you know, his brother died. Like, that's a, it's a heavy thing to get through, man. Like, I really, really do appreciate him talking about that. And I mean, obviously he has a song about what happened to Virgil. Obviously Virgil, he's not like, he didn't grow up with him, but that's a Chicago guy, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty sure that affected him. He probably had a relationship with him, so. That, that was interesting too. I really, like that first track is really, really personal. He's talking about his, you know, I'm pretty sure the album name is referencing like his grandma's house or something like that. His grandma's house. Grandma yeah. Yeah. yeah, his grandma's address. So um, I really do appreciate that. I like that. And that first track just sets it off with like how personal he's really like, just talking about family stuff that's going on. So um, I like this album way more than I thought it would. And I thought it was going to be way longer too, but it wasn't. Um, I actually 40 minutes. That, so yeah. Yeah. Really good, really good length too. So, um, yeah, I actually enjoy this album way more than I thought it would because uh, I'm not a huge, big uh, Lil Durk fan, but um, yeah, solid, solid album. Yeah, I really enjoyed this album. I haven't like, this is like the first Lil Durk album I've like really like sunk my teeth into, but mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if he's done this on previous albums, but I was very impressed by the way he uh, could like talk about real stuff, but also like blend it with like very melodic <laughs> songs i don't know I was, I was very impressed with how he was able to blend those two things so i think if you know you talk about some of the stuff he's talking about you could it, it could easily get very dour or very mm -hmm. you know slower a little more a little darker but i think just the way he is able to keep up the melodic sounds he does a really yeah. like they, they did a really good job on this album that's one of my mm -hmm. favorite things about this style of rapping generally. Uh, I think Lil Durk uh, sums it up because if you look at what he's saying, I think he raps really, really well um, from the sense of like, he's not a trap artist or someone who just says like, whatever, like he actually says a lot of like substance substance yeah. in, his, in his bars, but he sings it. And he may say stuff that actually is like, you know, he, he's sounding threatening, but it's over an RB, like a slow piano sample. Like, you know, <laughs> like, and I mess with it. I, I'm, a, I'm a really big fan of it. And I think just if you go down this, there's a stretch where I say it starts from head tap started from was cool, but I really liked head taps. Um, and I, again, I really love that singing rap melodic, stuff that he has going on but i think from like head taps to actually i'm gonna I'm let's say to like petty two bangers non-stop bangers well oh. let's talk about let's talk about oh, track yes. three that needs that oh, needs a little uh, track, track three, three, needs, three needs we need to talk about that track three aha may be one of the best diss tracks from back to back i'm gonna say it i'm gonna Ooh. say it now because my thing is not even it's not well, even push a t put out a, a particular diss track so i'm not gonna go there yet but oh okay <laughs> but, but, i mean my, my, the thing about back to back that made it so painful it was a hit was that it was a hit that's my yeah. point yeah. it wasn't that just that it was a, a diss it was the fact that this diss was now like the number one played song in america like everyone is hearing this diss and that's how i feel about aha because it's just so like i'm not sure you listen to it and you immediately recognize that oh this is a diss track against someone but you just yeah. hear it and you want to hear it again because it, it is such a catchy hooky like the oh, everything is. Don't respond to shit with Vaughn. Like, well, the, well, the first time I heard it, I was like, who is he going at? And then y'all was like, man, I was like, oh, he's going at Youngboy. 
Imagine oh. being in the gym and and trying to and trying to bench to that. To, you're doing oh, it. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Man. You're this doing is, it. Yeah, this was. What's the what's the last artist? I'm trying to think the last rapper that put a diss track on the actual. I think the game did it a couple years ago when he did a diss to Meek Mill. But uh, does, does Gunna count? Gun, oh no, no, no. He does not. <laughs> okay, first of all, no, no. He, he does not. He does not count. He does not count. If you guys want to talk about that, hear about was that our uh, January roundup? The January roundup. Go, yeah. go listen to the. Sorry, go to, listen I to, to throw that. I to throw that in there. Sorry. Yeah. Go go listen to that. Go listen to that and hear the diss. That was the worst top five diss of the. The century, my God, that was that was so dumb. Like, he that was so he, bad. And then he, no one should have talked about it if, if it wasn't this for the funny kids. Well, okay, what was it? Just for clarification, what was the diss that gonna said? The, it was the, I don't ever Freddie, Freddie Gibbs. Gibbs. That, that N word be telling fibs. That's it. That's it. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's all. <laughs> that's all. Um, but yeah, back this, to this. This this opera, was going hard. This operatic diss. You see, and I think this this is this is one of the things that i that i did you guys hear me did i go away for a second no you're there go ahead i'm good okay cool um this is one of the things that's kind of like a nitpick the melodic stuff i think is cool but for a whole album i can't do with it and that's one of the things i love about this track because he's not doing that at all he's at literally all. Use, he's using his actual voice which i wish he did more of because his voice his, his voice he uses it sounds way better than like using the you know the uh, the um auto-tune stuff but then i think it, his voice sounds yes great. completely agree with you um, at least to this song specifically and why I like yeah. it too. But I feel like that's why that stretch, I kind of shout out. It's like, even if it has the melodic rap, he, he he's also just kind of rapping and um, like that that sort of, that little chunk songs throughout. Like I feel like Shoot Out of My yeah. Crib, he does something like he does something similar. Golden Child, I feel like that's more, that's like rapping. Like he's sort of, mm -hmm. he's sort of going off, killing it. I love No Interviews. Um, oh yeah, I love that song. That's no, like a top too. three, top five song for me off rip. And then I just really need to get to to another top three, top five track. I don't know what you talk one. about it. Talk about it. Let me say something about future. Let me say something about future. <laughs> among you like this? All, you like this verse? Among all the complaints I think people may have about future, I think he still, I think he trailblazed this style that we're, that we love so much. Where we're saying Dirk kind of kills this whole sing rap melodic sort of thing. Oh yeah. And I think anytime he's on a song. And he brings that. I think he enhances it. I think Future Hell. I like. I didn't. I liked Future's verse. I think he enhances the song I overall. Um, I think he makes the song sound better. And I think him and Dirk sounded like a, a collab that makes so much sense. Um, and they both just sound good. And I love this hook. It's hook. But you penny and, and petty too. <laughs> petty, I'm petty too. Like this. This is you. Can, I can imagine going out and hearing this. Like this is. The oh yeah, at the club. Uh, oh yeah, this hook yeah. anthem. This this would have gone crazy. I agree. Yeah, look, Future, he just has that on lock. Like, if this is at the strip club or some club you got in Atlanta, like that's a that's a song that's gonna get played. And I agree. This is perfect Future, his lane all the way. This is this is him. Like, if you were like, this is what shitty song he's on, that's him. And I think that's good. Um, that's a good placement for him to ask him. I don't know if it was him that asked him to be on the song or like you know. Why did EP Genius of say? Why did this side note? Why does Genius say the notorious Atlanta rapper Future? What? Why is Future notorious? Yeah. Multiple reasons, I would <laughs> oh, yeah. say. I would say Future's notorious. But notorious? For multiple is that the right? Word? I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, gentlemen, okay. <laughs> that's true. For that's true. Like toxic. Toxic. Notorious. Toxic. Yeah, that would have been. Yeah, for sure. That would make sense. But uh, yeah, I agree. Petty Two is a is a good little club anthem that I really enjoy. Um, another one. What happened to Virgil? Uh, I love this song too. I love this. I song. like this one too. Now, gonna. I even like the feature. Like, gonna is fine. If, I don't. On, like my thing is for a gonna. I thought it was fine. I, for I mean, gonna. I was, so are you saying for gonna it was good? For gonna it was good. Yeah. I mean, okay. I don't want to say it like that, but I, I, I liked it. Y'all know this song. The thing I've been reading into the lyrics because, I mean, it just it's such a personal song. And before it's because of the title you listen to it and you're like, oh, it's about you know Virgil. I think yeah. it's about King Von. I'm pretty sure it's about King Von. I, I think it's I think it's also about Virgil in the sense of like they both died, right? And he, he probably sort of oh. using it to tribute both. But I think the song for the most part, like substantively, is about uh Vaughn. Part the, that line you just highlighted. I was to imagine you love to come kill. You're my brother. It was a tragedy. There's another line where he says, like, I wish you woke up from the surgery. Um, King Von was shot and was in surgery that he unfortunately didn't make it on the other side. Um, 
And I think when you realize it through that lens, it explains why this is so personal. Because I'm sorry, even if Little Dirk and Virgil Abloh were cool, to make a song that is this, like, this sort of raw and authentic in its feel, I was sort of like, wow, I didn't realize they were they childhood friends. I didn't realize. And then you realize, oh, no, I think this is just using Virgil in the sense of another prominent Black man who died. And I think almost like... I think it could be about both though. I don't want to. I don't want to slight because I don't. I don't know like their relationship, like how close Virgil and uh, Virgil Abloh. Just for clarification, we just been saying Virgil. Um, how close he was and Lil Durk, but uh, I think it could be about both. I think it could be about he's talking about you know his, his, his you know other people that have died in his life, Vaughn. But I think you could talk about Virgil too because obviously Virgil. I mean, we don't know his situation of what he was going through. Like Absolutely, medically. that's what we I don't think. Know if he had surgery I think. Yeah. I think I'm just saying generally or I think it's about both. Like I said, I think it's touching on like loss generally, but I think yeah. the more intimate lyrics uh, is a way to express the pain about losing either both his brother and- And Vaughn, yeah. That's fair. Know? That's fair. Yeah. Avery, you like you say you liked uh, Gunna's feature though? You really liked it? Yeah, I thought it was good. I really love like the, I guess the bridge where they say, oh my God, what happened to Virgil? Yeah, that was good. Very that was good. Catchy. I awesome. agree. Uh, um, yeah, I agree with you. Um, now I also want to touch on one of the, uh, the, now this is, we were talking about Benny doing radio stuff. Now Lil Durk will actually do radio stuff and it'll be on the radio or like playlist. What'd y'all feel yeah. about the Summer Walker track? Ooh. I thought it was cool. I liked it. I thought it was a nice little R&B. Oh, it was fine? R&B, R&B I really like this one too. I don't, I didn't that? mean to compare it to Ghana, but this is what we've talking about. I like it more than, um, the Ghana closure. Mm. I agree. I agree. Mm. Um, another one I liked too was Love Dior Banks. That was one I li- I liked a lot. Like, it, I don't know, man. Just like any song, and this has been happening a couple times. Remember Adele did it where she had like uh, her little son talking on the uh, yeah. kid talking on the album. This is it like just, it's, it just works. yeah, yeah. It just it just it just works because it's like man, this it really brings me it home. More when uh, Cole used to do it. This specific song, like when Cole oh. did it on a, on a Four Your Eyes Only, because that was just the situation where it was his friend's, yeah, his friend's like, daughter, yeah, his friend's daughter. And this is, yeah. of course, his brother's daughter. Um, yeah, that's a good parallel. I like that. Yeah, I like that. And that was good, man. That, that's another thing. Dirk is just, he's really personal. Yeah, he's talking about, he has a lot of lyrics talking about, we were joking about, he has a lot of lyrics about poop, you know, lots stuff of, like that. He's, of, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna cap, you gonna smell like perks and lean when I fart, you know, it's stuff like that. You say you got good gas, that ish be doo doo. I mean, he has lines like that, you know what I'm saying? But, um, this is what honestly brings the album home for me is like the personal stuff when he's talking about his brother, Vaughn, yeah. all this personal stuff, talking about loss, talking about what's going on in the streets. Even though like stuff like this is relevant, can be relevant to what's going on now because unlike Benny, Lil Durk is still very much involved with people that are in that life. And it could people could really, really get hurt. Like I remember that interview, I can't remember the guys, I'm, I'm gonna mention it again, but I'm, I'm gonna bring it up another time. But like in the interview, somebody was like, dude, you need to get out this life. He was crying to him, he was like, bro, you can't be doing this. You can't be involved in this, bro, that, yeah. you're so successful. Yeah, it was on Twitter. So um, yeah, man, this is what brings it home. So it's the heart, that's the that's the heart in the album, so. I agree with you, I agree. I think that's his, uh, it's, I think we underst- understate how difficult it is to translate emotion, like heavy emotion, to even talk about it, one. Some people can, can barely talk about their emotions. I yeah. think the ability to not only talk about it, but put it into a, turn it into like a melodic this, mm-hmm. is like, a, it's very much so like understated. And I think he's, he's very talented at that. Yeah. Um, I guess we have to talk about- too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What'd you say? Shoot out at my crib too is another one. Shoot out at my crib, yeah. that's another one. Here's my that story, but yeah. yeah. A lot of shootouts uh, going on in this album. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, though, it's not like something he's like, it doesn't even feel like something he's like um, necessarily encouraging or like glamorizing. I think like it's a lot of it's, storytelling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just storytelling. It's a lot of hurt in here. And uh, yeah, like, you know, somebody might argue, oh, he's glamor-. He's not. He's not like, yeah, I'm going to shoot everybody. It's not like that. It really feels like people are fine. I think that's lot, what their lives out there. The sense of like authentic, like the, the sense of it being real. Cause I really I don't, I don't think if you're really in this and you're and like us, this yeah. constant, like this constantly, you're not going to be on a rap song and talking about like, yeah, we're going to, we going to run up on them and do this, do this. Yeah. I feel it's going to sound much more like this where it's like, yeah, I agree. I'm just telling, I'm letting you know what happened. Like, this isn't great, but like, like it's literally my brother's child is my brother died. Like, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, totally agree. and that really makes me like this album. I think we have to talk about it. Um, he tacked on Broadway Girls to the end of this, and that told me everything I needed to know about this collab with Morgan Wallen. It, this is just the hit that they had to do to get, you know, the radio support, 
tack it on to the end of the album, call it a day, get get get, get a boost of the sales, call it a day, keep it pushing. That's yeah, what this song works way better than it has any right to. I like I it, it's catchy. Like I know why it's a hit. Probably not gonna listen to it again outside of this album. But I don't skip it. So I ain't gonna call it a hit. Nah, I think it's a hit. I think there's definitely a crowd that will really, really enjoy this, especially the people down in Frisco, Texas. <laughs> Not in Frisco, wow. man. No people. Hey, hey I didn't say you. Yeah, I said right, down right, in. Right, right, hey, right. Avery. Yeah, exactly. He'd be lying. If, 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 come on now, people. Are, I, I mean, don't know why. I don't know why Lil Durk felt the need to do this though. Well, okay, he said too. Didn't he say something like he's allowed to say that? Where he said something crazy about yeah, he had, like the week it came out, he was like he's not racist. That's what he says. I yeah, don't think, I, was like, but I think it's fair. Too. Whatever. I think Avery, to your point, I don't like the song, and I disagree with yours. I do, I do. I've skipped it. That's just it's not uh-huh. the song for me. I don't, really, I don't like the whole. It's just it leans. To, it's I don't know. It's not for me. But I think it does work to your point, point. and I think considering these two artists, Morgan Wallen being the sort of bad boy and country persona, you know, it doesn't. It's, and the way Dirk raps on some of these songs, I don't know if anyone else heard it, but I feel like I hear some of a southern country twinge sometimes yeah. in some of these other songs. <laughs> if there's anyone else, so- there's, there's one that song one here. Song. Okay, I don't I'm know what it is, but I'm glad you're there because I heard it and I was like, I don't know if anyone's gonna hear what this. What song is it? There's one song in there. It where made he me like- shoot out at my crib. I don't know if it is, but like, I'd have, I, I was, I should have wrote it down because I noticed I it every time I listened to it. And I was like, is this just my head or is it like? It sounds like a country song, right? It sounds like a country song. Okay, so when I heard crazy, that. But- when I heard Probably that, I was like, okay, well, maybe Dirk may actually have had a genuine interest in just wanting to do a country song. Or maybe if he's tasked with like, okay, what's your crossover gonna be? Like, you know, who's someone we can work with? It's like, oh, okay, well, you know, Morgan Wallen's a bad boy. Uh, you know, I'm sure who wants to do hip hop right now for his image. Uh, Lil Dirk actually, <laughs> you know, may have an interesting country. Let's put them together. And Honestly. This, well, I, I hate the fact that Morgan Wallen now gets to say I have a number one rap song. That kind of kills me. Yeah. But it's like, you know, it makes sense. I mean, that's not surprising considering every black family from Chicago has family from Mississippi. It's like kind of like a thing. Every black person in Chicago has like family from Mississippi. It's kind of weird. But um, I don't know. I didn't I didn't I didn't think about that until like the last track, but that's interesting you guys say that. I didn't it necessarily wasn't blatant. It was it just one song or throughout the album? Was it one particular I thought like there was there's one song in one particular that song. like really okay. started I'm sounding s- like I'm so <laughs> I'm I was scared to bring it up because I was going to get like, you guys thought we were like, shut up. I I was nervous too because I don't, (laughs) sometimes I play out on my genres, you know, I just be saying, look, Charlie XCX, I said that was hyper pop. Like, I don't, you know. (laughs) Oh my gosh. No, but I definitely heard it too, Avery. I definitely heard it too. Okay, I'm glad. Good Um, There's some. I also, I was going to say, I love, you know, obviously we talked about how he has, you know, these very personal bars, these very personal songs, but he makes it with melody very well. He also has like head ass, like, Toxic songs, specifically yeah. Blacklist, which I really like. Oh, this is horrible. <laughs> the song's toxic as hell. Oh, yeah. Okay. And and I really I'm pretty sure that's the song he said, I don't speak in tongues. I don't F with Vlad. The, oh, oh wait, no, I don't speak I in tongues, that, period. Yeah. I don't F I don't F with Vlad. Is that Blacklist? I think no, that's, that's Golden Child. That's Golden Child. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That was Sean Vlad. I actually Googled what their beef was about before. Because Vlad is kind of trash anyway, but. You know. Apparently, Vlad, Vlad was interviewing his, Dirk's rival or something, and they did something. I don't know. I don't, I don't mess with Vlad. Vlad is just like, he's kind of like, <laughs> we were talking about, he's kind of like Nightcrawler. He's kind of like that, but he kind of perpetuates the news. He kind of manufactures. He, he he creates beefs, and he's like, "Oh yeah, we gonna talk. Why why you guys beefing? Yeah, because we were you were on this interview talking about me. Because this dude was on here, you were talking to him, and he was talking shit about me. But uh, yeah, wait, well, you know, Avery, this is kind of sweet. You know, you say the the worst feeling to be on the <laughs> block list. I thought no, it was he, be toxic. I, just, I gotta answer the I, private call because you might call restricted. I don't know. I just I just think yeah, this is very. That's what girl, see. I know I've been there before. That's the thing. She like curry chicken bread. I like salmon. When she when she blocks you, she, <laughs> when she when she wants you to think she's blocked, but she'll call you on her friends want to see if you. That's the thing. That's, the that's thing. another thing. That's another thing too. He's, he's storytelling. No, but that's the thing too. Dirk will be really personal on here, and he'll say a line that just gets me out of it. Like yeah. he'll 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 be he'll be like, <laughs> man, my happened. brother died, and, and I'll be like, oh, it's like, oh man, you just you just lost. Like she like curry chicken bread. I like salmon. It's like, oh, I can't. It, no, that's the y'all aren't reading deep enough into these bars. Y'all know how much curry chicken burn and salmon meal it is. That's not cheap food. He's saying every time I'm freaking out, give her allowance. You go get the food. It ain't no that's problem. fair. Okay, 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 okay. Like, bro, me and Dirk are here. That's what y'all I'm are here. Y'all are here, twins. I just yeah. thought this song was hilarious and toxic, and I liked it that's a lot. Cool. 
It's very it, fun. It, it, it's fun. It drove down the future late a little bit, and I enjoyed. If it. you want to do other favorites, is generally, um, and I'm gonna go first. But <laughs> I also really love no interviews. Um, yeah, I, I think that's song. like. I think it's it, one, it goes hard. Then I like his, his lyrics. It again feels real. He has one line in particular where he's like, I seen Juice World's documentary. I don't want to purchase that. I'm finished. And mm. I was again like, this is this is what you should be telling the kids. This is what the kids need to know. Um, I don't know. I just think it, the, like his bars are sharp. The delivery is melodic, but it works for him. You know, and it also kind of, I wrote down after this, I was like, where's Petty Wap? Mm. Anyone else think that after this album? Like, where's Petty where, no. where, I don't no. know that. This, you know, you know, the, and I think of like the sings, the singy, songy, rap, melodic thing. Betty Wap always pops in my brain as far oh, yeah. as someone who was in that. Ten years ago. Ecosystem. Wow. Dang. Remember when Vine was popping? Man. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's just a fact. Look at me, Sorry. Look at me trying to uplift. Notice hits him with a stray. Okay. Hey, man. I remember he was on that Double XL cover with like Ben Staples and like Gold Link, and he was in the middle, and people were like, Betty Wap is the guy. Dez Love was on there. I was like, man, he's could have been. Hit. He had the world. He was the guy, and he, he had, had the world. He, he had the world in his hand. And he just lost. Run. It. Okay. Um, but what about you guys? What, what were some of your like your favorites? Um, I love the intro track a lot. I was actually like when I first listened to it, I was like, wow, my my ears perked up. Like I, I I'm serious. I wasn't gonna take this album super seriously, but when I heard that first track, I was like, oh, he's going here. I like that. Um, and honestly, I just want to say, isn't that crazy? Like how Nas, like that's how. Things in rap just recycle. Like Nas did an album, Illmatic, with a baby picture of him, and now it's just like Lil Durk with a baby on him. It's like, ah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, Lil, Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne did that a lot, right? Lil, yeah. yeah, Lil Wayne did that. It's like it's just crazy how things just recycle in rap, um, which is interesting. Um, so started from I really liked um, Aha is like the banger, top tier banger, banger. banger, top tier banger. Like I want to fight somebody. Love your banks and. Uh, what happened to Virgil? I like that too. Mm. So yeah, those are my favorites. So yeah, I think we have a lot of overlap. I go aha and like no interviews. What happened to Virgil? Block list. Mm. It's cool. great. Like like yeah. Cool cool cool. The highs are really like pretty high on this album, and I enjoy that. Yeah, they're entertaining. Too. It definitely was. So who wants to uh, start us off with the uh, last statements in sports? I'll go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You want me to go? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I enjoyed this album way more than I thought I would. Um, now, honestly, does this have a lot of replay value? Probably not. Sorry. Maybe that one song. Aha! Like I can see myself like banging that song out a lot. But uh, um, other than that, probably not. So for a score and another thing too, I said I mentioned that I wish he used his regular, his normal voice more. Like the melodic stuff is cool, but he sound fairly the same like his no inflections no change in his flow at all really for the most part which i you know got a little samey for me on that uh throughout the album so i'm gonna give this oh man this is tough dude it's gonna feel like a bad score <laughs> it's gonna feel like a bad score dude i'm gonna give it a man i'm gonna give it a six give it a six i'm sorry I don't feel like you said enough bad to justify a six, but you're gonna do you, King. Well, yeah, because I just, I just, it's just, it's, it's just, no, I, I didn't. I'm trying I to, be, I'm trying to be positive, you know what I'm saying? No, but you, it's just no, like I understand. You know, you you made uh, your point was clear. Your points were clear. I'm just teasing. Um, I feel the opposite though. <laughs> um, and I really like the album. Um, I was shocked at how much I like this album. Uh, because I think Voice of the Heroes, the previous, the little baby collab was cool, but I didn't come back to it a lot. Um. I definitely get there are some there are stretches that because of the sing songy melodic thing that can feel redundant. I definitely get that. But I don't think it felt redundant to me on this. I think there was enough variety that I honestly felt more entertained throughout than anything. Um, I like how authentic the bar sound. I like the variety in and out. I like that he clearly thinks about that in the production of the album, like not making it so that, you know, every once in a while giving you a song that sort of spaces it out. Um, and I think he just raps and sounds really well. So I'm at honestly, okay, I'm at a seven and a half. I was gonna be an eight, but I was like, am I think am I doing an eight just to contrast the six? So, no, I think I'm at a seven and a half. Um, a little dirt. Cool. Yeah, I was super impressed with him on this album. Um, I did not expect like to hear what I did. You know, obviously I know he's like a very good melodic type rapper from like you know the the Drake features and. Uh, back in blood which i love a lot um 
but yeah he really impressed me um and like i said the highs are pretty high the songs that like i like we didn't mention to me kind of like blend together sometimes um so i think i'm like i really enjoyed this album though so i think i go like a seven out of ten Cool, cool, cool. That's it. That's it. You mad? Are you mad, bro? No, I'm just. What's wrong? Before we formally ended, I'm just trying to decide if I wanted to do an eight or not. Oh my gosh. Because I it liked just... it, but I'm like, I don't know if. You know, let's just. Honestly, like, it's just like, to <sighs> me, and this, let <sighs> me be fair. I gave it a six because I thought it was good. And this is effed up, but it's just how I feel. Like it's really good for a little Dirk. I'm like, I thought it was really, it was really, it was way better than I thought it was gonna be. But expectations. You know, Broadway I girls, because of Broadway girls, I'm sticking with my seven and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you saying are you saying Broadway girls because you don't like it? Is it in poor taste? Because I don't Wallen's like it. it. No, I don't, don't like, like the song? it. I think it's it. No, I don't forget Morgan Wallen. I don't like the song. <laughs> like, oh, like, oh. <laughs> like, well, no. Let me not say forget. Include remember Morgan Wallen, and I don't like. The okay, song, okay, but. okay. Gotcha. Um, I get why he included it on his album though. It's just not my cup of tea. So nah, I, I wish she, I wish she, I wish she didn't do. It. I wish she just did the deluxe and be like, yeah, it's gonna be on this one. Like I wish she just had the short version without it on there. But it's not. So Tana talked for, but Benny the Butcher got a seven and a half out of ten according to the '97 demo, and 70, 72 20 by Lil Durk got a six point eight. That is ridiculous, but whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Let's move let's on. Think, let's think about it as a seven. Yeah. That's why I'm like, this pod don't represent me sometimes. This is not. Like, that's why. Not that's why school. this. That's why it's not, not my school. School. That's why. It's that's not why. Not that's why. Podcast. That's why we have. Uh, no, baby, this is an. <laughs> that's why we have our Excel sheet where I include the breakdown of every score as well as uh, what we each gave it that we posted during our review. scored, and I keep track of that just so every year we can do that episode and uh, we'll talk about it and remember see how things age. So stay tuned for that later this year. Um, on to this. Um, segment of the Namdi Iguanwu show. <laughs> Kidding, of course. Um, and Nobody I laughed. Like, the latest <laughs> one well, there's three of us and I did, so I say one Nobody laughed. For me. I'd say, and you're laughing now, so clearly you got a reaction. But oh, man. I think two laughs and a giggle is cool for me. Um, anyway, on the Hot 100, uh, Kodak has hit top three with Super Gremlin, and I feel like we have to give him his respect for the fact that that track has been there for 18 weeks and has been in the top five, top 10 for like most of it. Do we ever uh, talk about how he got shot like a month ago at a Justin Bieber after party right before the Super Bowl? No, he didn't, but he was shot about a month yeah, ago. Yeah, that happened. Yeah, that happened. That Never talked happen. about it. <laughs> he got shot. Another person would be real with their bars, yo. Because, you know, you rap about it. But um, I just like we don't give that song that much credit. It's probably going to end of the year. It's one of the like biggest selling rap songs or airplay wise rap songs in the year. Any, any uh, reaction oh, yeah. from that standpoint? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. This is a. Uh, yeah, I've heard this because uh, I think. Um, I knew the song because the 49ers, they loved coming out to this song and they'd always show them pregame, like coming out to like Devo Samuel listen to it. It's so perfect because Devo remind just he just reminds me of somebody that would listen to uh, to Kodak. I don't know. But um but yeah, uh yeah, I, I heard about this track for a while. Avery? Oh no, I got nothing. Avery said, nah, I don't care. I don't good. It's, I mean, it's cool. I don't hate it, it's fine. <laughs> He's out. Okay. Anyway, I just want to, I thought it was interesting. I'm interested to see if that ends up going to number one because the Akanto buzz is kind of fading and Heat Waves has been on this chart for 60 weeks. So, you know, if there's any time for a song to just jump up and do it, it's definitely now. Oh, yeah. Good point. Um, anyway, so it's interesting to see what happens there. Other things I wanted to highlight that aren't necessarily in the Billboard world uh, chart data, uh, NBA Youngboy uh, is now ranked as the number one most streamed artist on YouTube every single week in 2022. I've always wondered Ooh. where his popularity comes from. The man gets hella views on YouTube. I don't know if that's where the kids are. Yes. But that's what it like he is consistently one of the top streamed artists like rap artists it'll literally him and young boy sometimes it'll be like weekend drake young boy on youtube it's like insane uh but any reaction to that yeah man i remember we did that thing a couple years ago like 2020 like who like i was like why is young boy out here and it's like youtube man youtube yeah that report or whatever that, yeah that report man that youtube youtube things like young boy little dirk uh g herbo them kids <laughs> love listening to him on youtube Hey is man, it, these kids. Videos or is it like songs? You think? I think it's both. I think it's I think it's genuinely both. Because hey man, not everybody got streaming services. Some people can't pay that. You know, hey man, it don't it don't work for everybody. We we can do it. We you know we blessed, but like not everybody can do that, man. YouTube is a free service. Well, they have so, their streaming thing now, but I I, I, yeah. I still don't know if they. If these, we still got to pay for that. Oh yeah, that that could yeah, that, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, they have the streaming streaming thing too. That could be that's probably uh part of it too. But uh yeah. 
And then I saw this little fun fact, courtesy of our friends Hip Hop by the Numbers on Twitter. Coyle Ray and Nicki Minaj did a song that went to number one on iTunes. Nicki now has the most number one songs of all time, surpassing Drake. Any reaction to that? No, you were an iTunes kid for a long time. Speak to the value of buying long, music. Long, long time. Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't even... <laughs> that's crazy. Honestly, that's really impressive. Good for Nicki. I, I maybe is it... Nicki just has... That's the thing. We underrate how popular Nicki is, like... People try to just kind of discount her of like, oh, it's just another. She is out here, like really, really, like on level of Drake. Maybe not that level in terms of selling, but like in terms of popularity, like name, you know, people recognize her name. She's up there. So not shocked, man. Yeah. Not shocked. And she's released a lot of singles lately. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. That was, that was a little interesting. Avery, like, like, I, like I think that baby song probably went number one on iTunes too. Remember? Oh, did it? I'm, I'm, I, I, I could have. Oh, but probably, yeah, probably. Probably did, so. Yeah, good for Nikki. I liked her verse on the song. It was good. No, I agree with that. Over on the Billboard 200, all I want to talk about uh, King Von is what it means to be king to be the number two. I think he's sort of on like 56K-ish first week. So that's, you know, fortunate thing about posthumous albums. They tend to be like the artist is like a highest sale. So that's true in this case. Um uh, but yeah, people were listening to it, so they're still, you know, he's a little dark OTF. That family, uh, they they have they have that. Um, as far as what's supposed to happen, by the time you watch this tomorrow, Lil Durk uh, is expected to debut at number one with uh, his project, Seventy Two Twenty, uh, about one twenty to one hundred and thirty thousand first. That's good. Actually, that's, that's good. very impressive. Yeah, good. very impressive. Um, Benny is expected to hit the top 20, which will be a record, a record peak for Griselda so far. Top 20 uh, with about 20,000 sold first week. Good for him. Yeah, so there you go. So that's some things you have to look forward to. Um, and that's, I'm going to say that's it for the uh, industry highlights. Well, I guess well, those are all predictions, I want to say. The the Dirk and yeah. Benny. The predictions we got to see. But I can see them being true. They make sense. Yeah, I feel like if King, if, if Dirk gets over 100,000, that's really, really good. It um, is. Agreed. But yeah, if, in 120, that's even better. So, so yeah. Um, okay, project of the week. My project is Bruce's EP by Jordan Raquet. I still don't know how to say his name. I had his EP last year for project of the week a couple times last year. So, um, yeah, I mean, this guy is an Australian, New Zealand artist, you know, um, and he's really good. Really good. I've just been, all only projects I've listened to have been EPs and they've been really, really solid. So, yeah, man, I feel like there's something Avery you would like too, honestly. Like, this is something, I don't know, it sounds like a guy. It says R&B, but it doesn't even give me like an R&B soulful kind of voice type thing. Like he's just like a really good singer. So, um, I mean, I'm, yeah, you listen to it. I think you like it too, but this sounds like something Avery would really, really enjoy. Um, so yeah, I really, really like his music. Bruises by Jordan Raque. That last name is R-A-K-E-I. Yeah, I, did, I, had his app, I had his EP or project last year. So I, I know I did for a fact. So yeah, this, this project's really good. This is the new one from 2022. Cool. Mine is uh, Billy Joel's Greatest Hits, Volume 1 and 2. Mm. I mean, it's it's one of my favorite artists of all time. Best song. It, so, um, yeah. Is that an episode of comp- Best Greatest Hits Albums? What? Is that no, an episode of Best Greatest Hits Albums? That'd be kind of fun. Because I think that matters. Like, sometimes, like, oh, it's just greatest. Like, That's I don't know, hard, like, some though, of them. Because, like, some artists who shouldn't have a Greatest Hits album. Like, The Weeknd already has a Greatest Hits album. Is he there? But it's good. Highlights <laughs> the damn good, good album. It but is, but it feels a little too early. It feels too early, right? But what if your early. early stuff has been good? How am I going to compare that to like, you know? That's true. That's true. That'd be, that's no, true. That, 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 that could be an interesting episode. Um, is, this the first, is this your first time doing a Greatest Hits album? Have you done it before? Yeah, it's my a first time doing a Greatest Hits album, yeah. Oh, I like that. You see, be- and when I go to listen to Billy Joel, I either listen to The Stranger, which has like most of his hits, or this one, just because yeah. it's so good. Obviously, it's the Greatest Hits album. <laughs> Yeah. Fair. Um, and I went with uh, Non Perishable by Toby Lou, uh, who, one, shout out to Nigerian rappers generally. And then also is just, I think he's a rapper outside of, I want to say like Virginia, like DMV oh. for sure. Um, but he's been out for a minute and I've kind of been on him for a while thanks to a friend of mine who used to sort of like flag me whenever he, oh, I completely lied. And the Nigerian born Chicago raised and Los Angeles based rapper. Wow, my that's friend, a lot of places. My <laughs> friend who put me on to him is from the DMV. So for some reason I just clicked to him in the brain, but that's where he's from. And either way, he's just like a really dope rapper and MC. Um, so non-perishable he put out and I thought the concept was like it was only going to be available for a certain amount of days because... 
Oh, uh, like he was tweeting it like that for a minute. That'd be kind of dope, actually. Right, but then it's still here. So I don't know, you should check it out. He has a, a song with T-Pain that's like a really dope R&B-ish track called Two Hours. Um, other songs I like called Baby Cake, you should probably see it. Oh, he has a song, he sampled Chica for one of the songs, uh -huh. uh, The Last Dance, and it sounds like incredible. So you'll Which, probably see that. You know Wait a second. I, you know, I Googled it right before this. What should you do? Is the chef song called What Should You Do? Okay. No, Nami, is that, sure. like a, is that like an alternative album cover? The one that you oh, put right that's, here? That's the one that's on Spotify. That's interesting, because the one on Apple Music is totally different. So that's interesting. I'm not mad about it. That's just that's the, really the one I've seen. This is only, what is one on Apple Music like? Now I'm curious. The one it I've looks seen. like the little, it looks like the little tie. It's like different little things with like little Tide Pods, kind of basically, but it's really cool looking. It's interesting. I'll send you a picture. Oh, no, for sure. This. Yeah, and it says like the, Oh, that's dope. It has like the um, expiration date and it's like the, the, the day it released and it released last week. So that's really cool. That's cool. I like that. No, for real. And I'm sitting here like pressure trying to find You Should by Chica. The song is called You Should. Oh, I love by that Chica. song. Another Nigerian rapper. Shout out to Chica. Shout out to Toby Lou. Shout out to the country. Shout out to everybody doing it right now. Um, I didn't shout Fireboy DML Peru. His song with that cheer and also is hitting a new peaks on the Hot 100. Just random shout out to my, my Night Jack guys. We in here, let it, you know. Let's go, let's go. Um, but okay, I think I think that does it for us. Thank you for sitting through this. I want to say longer than an hour edition of the Nights of a Devil podcast. Let us know what you thought of the album we talked about. Seventy two twenty, uh, Tana Talk Four. Tweet us your opinions. Instagram DM us your opinions at the ninety seven demo. Uh, look forward to a newsletter this week. Right? Yeah, go St. Peter's Peacocks. Go St. Peter's Peacocks. Uh, yeah, we'll see you next week.